Hello and welcome to a new lecture series in our FPGA Vision Lab. In this series, we have a look at spiking neural networks. Spiking neural networks are a different approach on implementing a neural network and it's a very interesting approach, therefore we have a closer look at it. In this first video, we will see the concept of a spiking neural network and how it differs from the approach that we saw earlier. Second video, we'll have a look at training. And uh, the third video will show an FPGA implementation. The network that we ha will have a look at is uh, the one we saw in an earlier video. The network detects colors in a video stream. So we have a street scene in real time and the network detects yellow and blue colors of road signs. We designed a neural network for that application and uh, that network uses uh, three input values, red, green, blue value of the video stream. It has uh, seven hidden nodes and two output nodes. The two output nodes indicate yellow and blue color. And um, when none of these output nodes is active, we have a third category, which is background, so no color detected. The interconnection in this structure uses 8-bit values. And uh, with the spiking neural network, we have a different approach where we use only one bit line. And on this connection, we have spikes, pulses. And the number of spikes, the number of pulses in a certain time frame indicates the level of activity on that interconnection. There are two reasons um, for this approach. One reason is that one bit, one line is easier to implement than 8-bit. And um, the second reason is that this structure is closer to a biological neuron. There are different ways to implement the neuron and uh, these are described in literature. You see here a list of uh, different models and also the behavior after generating a spike can be implemented in different ways. You can subtract a value or reset to zero. And um, these implementation models have been analyzed by a student of our university, Mr. Klaus Felix Niederberger. And um, yeah, we selected one model and uh, one implementation for demonstration here. Um, this is a very good uh, approach, um, but it's not the only one that is valid and uh, other implementations are possible and might be better suited for a certain scenario. This model sim simulation shows the behavior of the spiking neural network. You see at the top a frame structure, so the processing is organized in a frame of 64 cycles. Then you see seven input values to your neuron, sp0 to sp6, and um, the first have a lot of activity, so um, you see a lot of pulses. Then you see here um, no pulses or very little pulses, so low activity on that input, and then again one input value with a lot of activity. All these input values are associated to a certain weight of the input, and um, the neural accumulates the weights internally. You see a graphical representation of this accumulation here. And whenever we reach a certain value, an output spike is generated. This is uh, shown here at the bottom. After an output is generated, you see a subtraction of a value, so the value of the accumulator decreases. We do not want to give a detailed comparison of the different approaches because this depends on the application that you use and how you implement the design. But of course, um, I can understand that we want to compare the spiking neural network to other approaches. Therefore, I can show you two figures. In the first figure, we have here the power consumption that is used by the networks. Here you see the power consumption of an FPGA implementation. Um, this value is the baseline consumption without any processing and um, this value is the power consumption of the old neural network of the former lecture series. And if you compare the spiking neural network, you see a significant reduction. However, the implementations differ. The old implementation uses a sigmoid function while the spiking neural network uses a ReLow 
If we implement the old network also with Velo as an activation function, then we get similar values than for the spiking neural networks. And in this table, you see the required resources for the FPGA implementation. Again, for the three different implementations, old network, old network with Velo and uh, spiking neural network. The sigmoid activation function requires memory and DSPs, but the other two implementations are comparable. It must be noted that there is an overhead for visualizing the results, so for creating the output image that shows the yellow and blue color. So from power consumption and uh, required FPGA resources, we see that spiking neural networks are an interesting approach. Um, they are in the same area, maybe slightly better, slightly worse than the conventional implementation we saw in the old lecture series. Definitely worth having a look at it. Uh, we do this in the next video with training of the network. I hope to see you there.